the impact of human activities uh, is growing uh, on climate change and weather change, and they're realizing its impact every day. But the impact of human activities on biodiversity is yet to capture the imagination of public. And for us, biodiversity is oblivious to us, and we don't know much about it of where we live. And for us, it is a uh, habitat change is just a local protest uh, against development activities. It is time that we center stage the conservation of biodiversity and fight for it actively. And it is not just it not just remains as a, a topic of discussion in glossy magazines or journals or articles or databases or references, which is frequented by conservationists and naturalists, but it becomes a public movement. The rich biodiversity I'm going to show you is everywhere around us and often unappreciated by us. You will see that the biodiversity is a key aspect to the ecosystem and must be maintained. Researchers, researchers have shown that there are multiple uh, there are multiple habitats which operate at a time and conservation of each habitat is important. One might think that why uh, are cities not good for avian biodiversity or biodiversity in general, but some researchers have shown that cities with natural habitat and structure intact have better chances of avian biodiversity. Cities like Singapore have shown 12 out of 54 species of birds of IUCN red listed threatened species are present in Singapore. 12 of them are present. So the biodiversity which I'm going to talk about is of Kargil region and contains a mosaic of natural habitats spread over a small area of 35 square meter with a rapidly growing human population. So Kargar lies on the Konkan Plains and uh, between Mumbai and Western Ghats. The tidal, the hills of the Kargar region, the grasslands and freshwater wetlands, the tidal mangroves and the tidal wetlands and mangroves which are basically run by creek called Talade Creek. So you realize that here is the Thursday MIDC area, industrial area, which discharges effluents, chemical effluents into this river. But the upper stream where I have surveyed remains unpolluted and full of birds. You can see how the city is encroaching into the wild spaces, encroaching into the natural habitats, on the hills, on in the other wetlands, and the grasslands are also being developed. These are the five natural habitats which I have surveyed just in the past two years, from 2018 to 2020. And in this, I have documented 165 species of birds, 39 species of butterflies, 36 species of wildflowers, many reptiles like snakes, uh, lizards, hares, mongoose, and many others. And what I realized is that each of the habitat is interconnected and barely a few kilometers apart. So the Bilapur Mumbai Hill Range, which in Khargar is only in a small area of 20 square kilometer, but it attracts a lot of biodiversity. And it is not just in monsoon. And in, in this image, you might think this is just a green mass of hill. But when you go closer to the objects, you realize the biodiversity it holds, the plants, the insects, the butterflies, and you realize that it is a haven for wildlife. Now, there are various this tropical deciduous forests on the Khargil Hills, which bloom with flowers. And, dif and different trees bloom with flowers in different seasons of the years, thereby keeping the birds and keeping the survival of birds and 
insects, good throughout the year. I have documented 36 species of wild flowers, and then there are even more, I'm sure. And these are colorful and have different aromas. And the birds and insects which they attract are also different. The other inhabitants of the hills, like butterflies, are uh, just an ant colony stone, crabs, and garden lizards. These are basically the pollinators to the ecosystem and run the ecosystem together. The birds of the hills are documented 74 species, from smaller size to large size. Some are migratory, and like, and some are small, like greenish frogger, to some large, like greater spotted eagle. The natural grasslands in between urban sectors are small, only about three square kilometers in area, but they have tons of biodiversity in them and lots of insects and birds which feed, which are there present. But this area is prone to debris dumping and destruction due to man-made fire and man-made activities. There are 50 species of birds which are documented in the current grasslands. You can see the variety. The pipits and lards are a characteristic, characteristic species of the grasslands and will dwindle if these grasslands are burned or destroyed by man-made activity. The Siberian stone chat is a small bird of size of sparrow and travels all the way from Siberia and comes to winter in India. Can you, you can imagine the difficulty that would face for such a small bird to migrate so far. So you have to appreciate the long journey it will take. There are seasonal fresh, freshwater wetlands in, which are created in monsoon on undulating plains in Kharagar and they basically attract lots of wildlife to them like birds and insects and they along with perennial freshwater bodies they are the breeding and nesting sites of many birds. I documented 17 species of birds in the freshwater wetlands and what I've realized is that some species have an overlap with the tidal wetlands and that some species also have overlap with the hills, the grasslands and the higher grounds near wetlands. So what I realized is that if we are planning a conservation then, then each and every habitat needs to be conserved and not just one because these birds depend on each habitat and their lifestyle is interconnected with each habitat. This is the tidal wetlands connected to the Arabian Sea by the Taloje Creek. They cover an area of roughly 8 square kilometer and they are basically a house of aquatic life and birds. And the Taloje Creek on its banks hold lots of mangrove forests which are nursery to the aquatic life and birds. You can see the concrete jungle coming close to the mangrove forest. And we often see this when we go for bird watching and we think that one day will come when this uh, concrete jungle will engulf the wetlands and mangroves which are there present in the city, thereby destroying the natural structure of ha natural habitat and structure of natural habitat in the city. There are migratory birds which come in the tidal wetlands and tidal water bodies being approached by the city. They only come here because there are vast amount of food for them, fishes, mollusks, and other vegetation for them, which they feed upon. And there are tons of birds, migratory birds, which come to these water bodies because of the richness it provides to them. I have documented 116 species of birds in the tidal wetlands, and they have different beaks adapted to different sort of lifestyle. Some have beings are active to catching fish, some for probing mud, some for catching snails and mullers. So what I realized is that if there is some blockage in the tidal wetlands caused by man-made activity, then it will perish all these species inland and the tidal wetlands which are connected to the creek. So it must be ensured not to occur such activity. There are resident species of birds in the tidal wetlands like egrets, passerines, like abitavats, herons, ibis, weavers, cormorants. So 
these birds nest here and breed here. Some of them breed here and nest here. The migratory birds of tidal wetlands are dominated 52 species, and they basically here they are gathered on the shores of the water body in low tide, and these tidal wetlands attract many birds and many migratory birds. And uh, what I've seen is that in low tide, these shore birds and ducks, basically shore birds, they come to the creek banks and water body on the banks of water body and feed and then go back in high tide to the roosting areas. Many a time the roosting site with the elevated ground near water bodies are destroyed by fishermen. So if you see a tidal wetland near your area, you will often you will see a vast diversity of bird life there. And this tidal wetland along with the neighboring habitats which create a mosaic like grasslands and freshwater wetlands and hills should be preserved. All of them should be preserved to intact, to keep the biodiversity of all the species and birds intact. So I will show you a little bit about the migratory birds. Seeing is believing. And I have to show you the various birds of different habitats and from different regions of birds from where they come from. The black-tailed godwits of tidal wetlands come from Central Asia and Europe. The Pacific Golden Clovers of tidal wetlands come from Arctic regions. You can see they come from Arctic regions, so far away. Migratory birds of grasslands, grey-necked bunting comes from Central Asia. Migratory birds of hills, greatest political comes from Northern Europe and Eurasia. These migratory birds are also affected by climate change. And their migration pattern affects. And in the winter of 2000, 19, I had witnessed the delay in the arrival of migratory birds because the monsoon that year, that year had continued late. So we have to appreciate the long journeys and they will not come to these wetlands or these habitats if these are destroyed. And we will think that where all they have gone and this will affect their population and diversity in faraway regions as well. There are few there is a organization called IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, which lists species according to the according to the threat which they face. There are least concerned species, near threatened, vulnerable, endangered, critically endangered, extinct in the wild, and extinct. I have observed five, six different species of birds in Thargar wetlands, that is tidal wetlands, which are threatened species. And, and one of them I have seen in a nearby area, which is the steppe eagle, which is endangered. And you realize that these six species of Thargar are threatened and some are near threatened, some are vulnerable. So these are curlew sandpiper, black tailed godbits. These both are shore birds, which are effect, which, uh, which depend on the tides for their survival. These are painted stork and black tailed ibis and woolly neck stork, which depend, which are basically storks and ibises, which also uh, are wetland birds. And this is the greater spotted eagle found in the wetlands and the hills. We as citizens of Thargar have witnessed some destruction of natural habitat caused due to man-made activity. These are burning of hill slopes, quailing in the hills, debris dumping in the wetland, emptying of wetlands. You can see the vast amounts of fishes dead, illegal fish and prawn farming, reclamation of wetland for development purpose by filling them with mud. Burning of hill slopes is created by miscreants in December and January every year and it burns away the vegetation and the bird life and insect life is affected until monsoon or spring comes. And querying in the hills is uh, produces shock waves and removes land mass and it can the query fill can also be used to fill a faraway wetland. And dumping in the wetlands 
basically uh, releases toxic chemicals in the water affecting fish population emptying of wetlands for fish farming and prawn farming was witnessed by our citizens recently in thargar and we realized that they have put mortars and turbines in the wetland ecosystem and destroyed the ecosystem there must be a way to stop this and to regenerate the ecosystem there the reclamation of wetland for development purposes by filling them with mud has been happening in thargar since a long time and it is either done by civic authorities or governing authorities or by wealthy and powerful fishermen so we as citizens of thargar have written many emails to various authorities like wetland committee mangrove cell and uh, coastal regulatory zone authority but none have taken any steps to protect the natural habitats and the species they hold there are also deforestation happening in the hills uh, and this is created by local villagers to do this if they don't get access to gas cylinders or they have to burn something else and what i have realized over the years that we have to preserve these natural habitats and prevent such natural man made destruction otherwise a time will come when we will have very few species and very few natural habitats left around the world and then we may wonder where it all has gone and then we will realize that the future survival of our planet and the future generations is in balance so it is time that we realize and explore and appreciate and preserve our lo local and neighborhood biodiversity and and you realize that you're not alone and there are tons of facebook groups which spread awareness about bird diversity biodiversity in general and uh, there are many platforms like ebird which spread awareness about bird biodiversity there are many such platforms on social media also and these basically are keep you connected with the world of similar minded people who are working towards nature and recording it and preserving it so i'll say this and end that end with this that we have to look forward and not look back and we have to basically explore and do what the best we can do thank you